This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Even after our classmates leave, a conflicted expression lingers on Yumiko's face. I can see a complex mixture of gratitude, guilt, and anxiety in her eyes. On the whole, it would be fair to say the girl is still somewhat unsettled at the moment. It's hard to blame her after how rapidly events have developed in the last few hours, but even so, tomorrow she's going to have to confront the thing she's been that's been holding her back all this time. I mean, Fruit of Grosse and Clannad are similar in the sense that they're both visual novels, they both have great music, great art, and they both have emotional moments. Clannad is many magnitudes less cringy and painful than this game. It's a lot better. Also, the, both games are extremely long. I did a full playthrough of Clannad on stream several years back, and I got exactly 200 YouTube VODs out of it. And I did every route, so... Very, very fun. Probably That might have been my favorite game to stream, just period. It was so good. <sighs> Alright. Yuji's room. Oh yeah. Yeah. Having trouble sleeping? I decided to have Yumiko sleep in my room tonight, for security reasons, if nothing else. It's been a while since we turned off the lights and got in bed, but there's no hint of drowsiness in her voice. Her uneasy words echo inside the dark, quiet room. If I didn't, I never would have asked you that question in the first place. Yeah, compared to risking everything on a thoughtless bet, running away and keeping our heads down would have been the clearer choice. Much less risk involved. I hear clothes rustling softly on Yumiko's side of the bed. We've been lying down on our, with our, on our backs turned to us. Let's try that again. We've been lying down with our backs turned to each other, but it sounds as though she's turned to face me. She pauses for a moment, then sighs softly. All that for someone who's been of no use whatsoever. Oh, that's her saying that. Whoops. That would be... I'm sorry, that would have been extraordinarily rude if Yuji said that. I thought he was saying that in, like, a sarcastic way to make her realize that that's not the case. My bad. I'm sorry. They both their names start with why you. Why you? <laughs> Yumiko, don't you remember what I told you at the very beginning? I thought I was pretty clear about this when I coaxed, coaxed you out of that airplane. Nobody needs your guilt or apologies. Try gratitude. All you have to do is think. All you have to think about right now is breaking away from your father in the Sakaki house. Once you get your freedom, show your appreciation to the people who helped you. That's all the repayment we need. <laughs> Why, you little? Ay, <laughs> caramba. Of course you will. <laughs> that was the worst Bart Simpson impression I think anyone's ever done. Ay, <laughs> caramba. <laughs> sort of like Ross. Hey, <laughs> <I> Wazowski. Ay, <laughs> <I> caramba. <laughs> You've made your decisions for the last year, Yumiko. You've grown. Have a little confidence in yourself. So <laughs> My words seem to have at least some effect, as Yumiko mumbles vaguely encouraging words to herself. There's another rustling sound from the other side of the bed. She seems to have turned away from me once more. It's not like I'm absolutely confident about our chances myself, and I'm sure as hell not qualified to be pompously preaching at Yumiko like this. The words I spoke just now were directed to myself as much as her, an attempt to persuade a coward to stand and fight for once in his life. Before too long, Yumiko speaks to me again. Sure, go ahead. She hesitates for a moment, then concludes slowly. I will sleep in the same room as you. Deal?
Do I gotta do that? I'm not afraid to do that. This time I'm the one who flips over in bed. Yumiko's trembling slightly, even from behind. It's obvious that she's forcing herself to be brave. First, I gently place a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Understood. Just promise me one thing first. Promise me you won't think of this as the last time. We're going to be together for the rest of our lives, alright? That's a promise. Don't even let yourself think otherwise. Yumiko's back shivers again, just a little. She sniffles once before responding. I think I'll pretend not to notice the hint of suppressed tears in her voice. <laughs> Letting the tensions rain from her body, Yumiko yields herself to me. <laughs> Works for me. Uh-huh, sure it does. Doesn't work for me! With a nod, I slip her my arms around her. Cool! Yay! Skip it. Good. Even after we thoroughly confirmed our mutual feelings, Yumiko and I continued talking for a long time. She seems less uncertain than before. Her voice has regained something of its usual calm. Once again, that... So presumably there was a sex scene there. That's a completely pointless scene that adds nothing. <laughs> it's literally just like, oh, let's take a break mid-conversation to have a sex scene. And then, all right, now we're back to talking about it like before. Sakaki Michiaki? Yumiko nods slightly against her pillow. <laughs> That's because the man eats, sleeps, and breathes his work. <laughs> just like another day, I got my two hours of sleep, time to work 22 hours at the office. <laughs> man, I normally only sleep one hour, but I was tired today. <laughs> From what Yumiko says, the man known as Sakaki Michiaki doesn't enjoy discussing his past in any detail. Any reader of economic magazines or websites can find an outline of his impressive academic background and professional accomplishments. But there's virtually nothing to be found on the more personal aspects of his life, because he eats, breathes, and sleeps work. <laughs> Even the sexual scandals that Yumiko described have been largely scrubbed from the narrative. For so little to be known about such a public figure suggests a concentrated effort to scare off or manipulate the media. Gee, I wonder what that would be like to have a manipulative media. All I have found is a loose sketch of the man's personality, repeated again and again. For the sake of expanding his corporate empire, Sakaki Michiaki will do absolutely anything. I wonder if something happened when he was younger. Human beings are shaped by their childhood experiences more than anything else. Even Yumiko doesn't know much about that part of her father's life, but there must have been something that made him into the ruthless obsessive he is today. <laughs> Don't worry, when he opens his eyes, he looks super ridiculous. Yumiko seems to shrink a little as she draws close to me. Of course. Rest assured. Embracing Yumiko with one arm, I run my hand through her hair, then stroke her cheek. And a few minutes after her trembling finally dies down, a peaceful drowsiness settles over us both. FBI, open up! <laughs> Epic music, yes! <laughs> Savage Jan! <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> <laughs> I know. I, I demanded the best. I mean, but the best couldn't come, so I have to settle with you. Oh! <laughs> if I wanted to put in a lie or sound alert, it would probably be from uh, Revenge of the Sith. You liar! <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it was your own company that analyzed your company and said that your company did nothing wrong, yeah, that is kind of fishy. Oh no, not man A and man B. 
どういうおつもりですかこれは私どもに対する不当な行為であり拘束など無論あなたの上司の許可は得ている表向きは泊まりがけのご招待だあとで何を言おうが遠慮なくもみ消す This guy sucks! Every time he's on screen, he sucks more! <laughs> And yet he's still entertaining. I don't know why. 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 I don't It is dapper. My goodness. He, he definitely has a sense of style, but a、uh, terrible, terrible person. <laughs> but you know what? In a game filled with terrible people, I don't judge him that much for it. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you really post that question in Twitch chat? <laughs> You know how I don't like talking about politics. Well, specifically, I don't like talking about politics on gaming videos. You know, I'm, I'm, here, to, I'm here to game and have fun, not to discuss people's worldview and political views. Hey, no, no, no worries. Just, I, I will not comment on that. Wow! You just. Man A and Man B just f r e w Jan in the basement. What the heck? They suck. Hmm, bleh. <laughs> Is he the most unlikable character in the game, though? That's the question. I still don't know for sure. By the time the morning light against my eyelids wakes me, Yumiko's already gotten out of bed and dressed herself. Noticing me stir, she turns back to face the bed. Yuji, oh, hey, you're wearing your uniform again. Her voice is clear and dignified. There's no hint of the weakness or fear from last night. It sounds as though she's steeled herself for what's coming. Yeah, morning. I roll out of bed and quickly begin my own preparations. Ooh, more transitions without, with the music continuing. A little while later, everyone's gathered in the lobby just as we arranged yesterday evening. There's one hour before our appointment with Michiaki. Time we'll, time we'll use to make a few final preparations. Well, this isn't going to be a siege battle, but it never hurts to cover all your bases. Stay on your toes. How's it going on your end, Sachi? Sachi responds without taking her eyes off the screen of her laptop. At a glance, there's nothing odd visible from the video feed of the conference room she's monitoring. Okay, now we wait for the villain to make his entrance. Forming my right hand into a fist, I lightly smack it into my left palm. And almost as if someone's taking their cue, the sound of running footsteps approaches from outside the dorm. Uh oh, he brought the army. Returning from her patrol, Michiru bursts into the lobby in a state of obvious consternation. Ah, Michiru, it looks like you got ribbons in your eyes again. Yumiko, who had been sitting on the sofa in silence throughout our meeting, rises gallantly to her feet. As the others watch with concern in their eyes, she slowly opens the door and heads outside. I follow quietly in her wake. She really got to get ribbons out of her eyes. Wow, epic music now, I love it. An extraordinary spectacle greets us. Specifically, it's an absolute swarm of jet black cars, reminiscent of that parent teacher conference visit, but on a far greater scale. I count more than ten vehicles at a glance. Hard faced men in black suits who could easily pass for gangsters form a solid row in front of the cars. The dorm's entirely surrounded. Their unbroken reign of vehicles and men stretches around the building at a distance of maybe ten meters. You know, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Clearly not interested in letting us get away this time. Here's my rule, RS.、Um, I actually don't mind talking politics with people who just genuinely want to talk and not just be like, oh, you suck, you're terrible, my side or the highway. Here's the thing, though there's a time and place to talk politics. 
And um, streams or videos where I'm playing a video game is not the place for it. You know, I think we're all here really just to enjoy the game and not really to get into heated discussions. That that's that's my policy on that. So. Yeah, I mean, like, if you if you if you ask political based questions in chat, don't don't expect don't expect an answer from me. Probably only natural, given his long pursuit and the insult I delivered last night. But above all else, I think this display of force is the product of Sakaki Michiaki's sheer stubborn tenacity. The rear door of the car stopped directly in front of us, and it swings open, and with extremely deliberate movements, a single man approaches. A slender, graying man dressed in a conservative charcoal suit. His glare as sharp as a knife, and significantly less friendly. It's Yumiko's father, Sakaki Michiaki. No. <gasps> oh, that's a good CG. I like that. <laughs> These two look like they're made for each other. They have the exact same glare on their face. <laughs> Just his eyes are narrower. That's that's awesome. I love this. The first words out of his mouth are a toneless expression of surprise. As he looks over his daughter, the corners of Michiaki's mouth jerk up slightly in something resembling a smirk. <laughs> Savage! But I love it. <laughs> Bruh! Really? He's like, I assaulted you for your own good. What a psycho. Michiaki's scornful expression gives way to disconcerting smoothness for, to a gentle smile. ああ、ユミコ。今ならばまだ許してやる。最後の慈悲だ。お前が私の元へ戻ってくれば。泣いて許しを超え。お父さんごめんなさいと謝罪しろ。そうすればすべて丸く収まるんだ。さあ、早く。パンチ<laughs> voice quivers with rage. Her teeth grinding audibly, she squeezes spiteful words out of her throat and fires them at Michiaki like arrows. A gust of wind blows across the yard, kicking up a swirling cloud of sand. For just a moment, it hides Michiaki from view, and then he appears again. And Yumiko's tightly pursed lips open. Michiaki doesn't even flinch, but Yumiko presses on regardless, her eyes slightly downcast, letting the anger she's kept inside flow freely out of her. Let him have it. Yumiko turns back. Her gaze lingers on me and Sachi, then turns to the dorm where our other classmates are waiting. I've never seen such a peaceful smile on her face before. <laughs> Ironic, because I thought he was a robot for the longest time. With a flutter of her hair, she spins back to face Michiaki once more. Ooh, yeah, let him have it. One of these CGs is definitely going to be the thumbnail. Unless we get a better one. Hmm. 
Yumiko's eyes opened wide in a furious glare. Her teeth snapped together even more loudly than before. A harsh bellow cuts through the air. For a moment, Yumiko flinches back. Michiaki takes a firm step toward us. He speaks with a voice so low it seems to rise up from the ground underneath his leather shoes. <laughs> and once you and once you own the country, then what? Uh some people some people just never think that far ahead. <laughs> oh. Bruh, do you not see how you're doing the same thing to your daughter? Or are you like, that's a good thing? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's exactly what he thinks. Oh. Oh, so this guy's messed up too. But that that don't excuse nothing. The thing standing in front of Yumiko right now isn't a human being. It's the incarnation of an ambition handed down through the decades. A company in the shape of a man trying to swallow her into itself. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> if Yuji was in Fire Emblem, he'd have a strength stat of 30, let's be honest. <laughs> I knew it. You're not even human. Oh, that's her speed. Darn it! <laughs> Why you again? <laughs> Are we gonna kill him at the end of this? The game's really trying to push us towards like hating him more and more. <laughs> あなたが原油を作ったんじゃないの。会社の発展のために yeah, that ain't happening, bro. As Michiaki extends his hand, Yumiko draws back a step in refusal. The next words out of her mouth are delivered in a voice as cold as ice. Michiaki's eyebrows twitch ever so slightly. A moment later, with an expression caught halfway between an angry scowl and an amused smile, he answers. Ooh. Michiaki listens to his daughter's words emo expressionlessly. There's no anger, no surprise, no scorn or fear. His face is simply blank, and somehow that indifference is more intimidating than any emotion could have been. Finally, a dry, rattling chuckle emerges from his throat. <laughs> Actually, Yuji did that. She didn't even understand it. Much like me. Clapping his hands together with easy confidence, Michiaki responds as if genuinely pleased by the situation. There isn't the slightest hint of anxiety in his cold, amused eyes. <laughs> Yumiko turns around once more. Sachi is just lowering a cell phone from her ear, her face a ghastly shade of white. 
The normally unflappable girl's voice shakes with disbelief. <laughs> yeah, but he blackmailed them. Uh-oh, looks like we can't impeach the Senate after all. This, this guy is simultaneously smart, but also colossally stupid. Like, he's business smart to the extreme, but he has he knows nothing about basic morality. <laughs><笑>子供の革命ごっこがどこまで通じるのか興味半分で見ていたが思った以上に勉強していたようで驚いたよ。構成してきちんとした学校を出れば。<laughs> As Yumiko bites down on her lip in frustration, Michiaki takes another step forward, his stride even larger and bolder than before. He's, he's only like two steps away from her right now. Yeah, that just sounds so great, doesn't it? Yeah. Bruh. If that don't warrant a slap, like what does? Oh, that's it. That's what deserves the slap. Yumiko's still mounting her best attempt at resistance, but the momentum has shifted entirely in favor of her father. Her face placid, his face placid and composed, Michiaki takes another step forward. And this time, his cruel eyes flick over in my direction. Bruh, you think you can order me around? <laughs> you got everything coming. His tone of voice is light. Teasing. I mean, norm normally I'd agree, but also, you're her dad, so it does kind of make sense for her to talk about how she feels. In strong contrast to her father's composure, Yumiko's voice twists with sorrow and fear. Without particularly reacting to either of them, I cock my head to the side and furrow my brow. That's funny. Do I hear a phone? Michiaki grimaces sourly in evident disappointment. Wrong. Uh, does it sound like a phone's ringing? But it, it does sound like a phone's ringing, but it's not mine. Somebody else must be getting a call. That man clearly seems to think this is somewhat less than important right now. For the first time, I met, meet his gaze with a powerful glare of my own. You still don't understand. It's your phone. With a very important call. Dubiously, Michiaki reaches up for the pocket of his suit. The instant his hand touches the softly buzzing cell phone, his bemused expression changes to one of pure surprise. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think he could get a derpier face, but he did! <laughs> That's the funniest facial expression. Uh -oh, I'm in trouble! No, no. Oh, not important. You should probably answer right away. Take a look at who's calling. Is it man A and man B again? Best characters? Muttering complaints to himself, Michiaki glances down at the screen. His face stiffens instantly. Oh, 
He hurriedly presses the answer button, his attention now focused solely on the phone. The rest of us no longer seem to even register. <laughs> I thought it was someone else's. あ、もう仕分けございません。ちょうど今お話ししておりました総会の最中でして、その総会のことで連絡があってね。手短に言うよ。あ、はあ。事情が変わってね。君を支援することはできなくなった。すまないが。わあ。What happened, dog? Hell, not my presidency. <laughs> Oh, perfect. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> you can't impeach the Senate. <laughs> What happened? Yay! I nod casually to acknowledge Sachi's report. Thought as much. Just how JB told me it would play out. Entirely on the other end of the emotional spectrum, Sakaki Michiaki stands before me in stunned, furious disbelief. It's hard to believe he's the same man who was so full of confidence before the phone rang. Squeezing his cell phone with a quavering hand, he glares at me with an expression full of undisguised wrath. <laughs> he's like, I don't understand how you can impeach the president when I own the company! <laughs> Reminds me of all of Yumiko's reactions when I brought her here yesterday. The man simply can't process the situation he's found himself in. Sometimes one phone call is all it takes to change your life. I'll explain. Stepping out protectively in front of Yumiko, I approach her trembling father. It's just as you said. No matter how much of a group of children struggle, it's fundamentally ridiculous to imagine that they could stage a large-scale corporate conflict. Convincing the oppos opposition to move would have been nearly impossible unless people holding genuine power were leading the charge. However, there was one lever which could undoubtedly move even those deeply cautious men. An organization possessing tremendous influence, and the largest stockholder in the East Beach Group. Once JB obtained a route to them through a certain connection of hers, our victory was all but assured. They were the focus of our attention from the very start, but as I'm sure you know, it never hurts to be doubly cautious in this sort of thing. That's why we attacked the problem from so many angles over the last year. After all, we were up against Sakaki Michiaki. If we spent all our time messing with the industry Ministry of Infrastructure, I'd expected you catch on and devise a counter-strategy. JB's connection had overwhelming influence over the Ministry, but Michiaki might still have managed to turn the tables on us if our movements were exposed in the early stages. We needed to set the wheels in motion without tripping the, tipping them off of it to our real plans until the very last moment. That was the primary objective of all of our other movements. Therefore, we started building ourselves a pseudo-majority, knowing full well it would fall apart in the end. We let you see a bunch of children sniffing around. Gave you a nice, easy target to un undermine. Exactly. He's <laughs> so sad! Aww. Michiaki's cell phone clatters to the ground. His head slumps over sagging shoulders. The arrogance from a few minutes ago has vanished without the slightest trace. Excuse me, sir. Christ has a capital C. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids! Muttering reproachful words to no one in particular, he drags himself back to his car and climbs slowly inside. He still has, like, a hundred goons here. He could still make us pay for doing that, but... I, I guess he don't have the power to do that no more. The black-suited men surrounding the area, perhaps sensing their employer's defeat, hurriedly begin to withdraw. With the roar of a dozen engines, clouds of dust from many tires fill the air, as if to mark the conclusion of our battle. Easy. Amine bursts out the door moments later. Makina and Michiru follow in her wake, their faces overflowing with joy. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, sorry for startling you. あ、そう、そう。最初からそういう仕込みだったなら言っておいてくれればよかったのに。はい。私も連絡を受けた時は寿命が縮む思いでした。あんたが言うぐらいだから相当なもんよね、さっき。うふ。とにかくこれで晴